Okay, let's start with talking about a dress code policy. I find that dress code and summertime tend to go hand in hand. Um, this is the time when people start to revisit about what is the appropriate amount of dress or lack of dress uh, that is appropriate for a healthcare practice. The good news is, is that it's what you want it to be, but I always suggest that you have some type of a dress code policy. If you don't have a dress code policy, then anything goes. So this is a good time to be able to review your dress code policy and decide what is appropriate for your practice. Now, there are a number of reasons why you might want to have a dress code policy. One is to have a consistent professional look and brand for your practice. So your brand image um, wants to reassure your patients and your clients that this is a professional friendly organization and that you are all part of a team. So you can have some team branding. You might have lab coats that have stitched um, brand on your pockets. You might have a, a color theme. Anybody can choose whatever uniform color that they want as long as it's blue um, or some other types of combinations. Um, you might have a policy that you allow street clothes for your office staff and your healthcare providers or anybody else who has access to patients um, needs to wear scrubs or a lab coat. The opportunity to offer a blended view um, is something that you might want to consider, or you might want to have a policy that everybody needs to have the same type of uniform. You can um, change this up as it meets your clinic requirements. It might be uniforms that you provide to your employees. You might offer a laundry service. You might ask them as a condition of employment that we expect our, our front office and our healthcare teams to, to, to wear scrubs. Um, you might provide an allowance. You might provide a bonus. All of those things are for you to decide, but you need to have a policy so that it is clearly executed and communicated um, amongst your team. Now, there are a number of uh, things that you can do that you might also want to consider as far as uh, health and safety issues. So there are um, some considerations about the type of practice that you provide and making sure that the patients are safe, the employees are safe while they are at work. Uh, for example, having closed toe shoes so that they don't injure themselves while they are at work. And it might just simply be, um, makes a lot of good sense because your workplace can be dirty. Um, the people that you're working with may have blood and body fluid spills, and you don't want that on your good clothes. Um, perhaps that's uh, another incentive for you to have a dress a workplace policy. Now, if you decide that you don't want to have a full uh, uniform policy, you might want to do something that's going to help you with your branding. So even just considering having name badges so that you've got a consistent way to identify who is employees at the clinic and who is not. If you don't have uniforms as part of your branding in your, in your clinic, um, people can easily become confused about who are staff members and who are not. And we want to really encourage our patients to have that level of trust with us um, and be able to quickly identify who is allowed to be asking them all these personal questions. So in um, a couple of things for you to consider is um, name badges is who's going to make them. You can buy them pre-made, uh, you can have them branded. Um, you could have just the first name, you might have the uh, professional designation of that individual. Um, this is an opportunity for you to really feel comfortable with the branding for your clinic. Um, and it is a very cost-effective way to be able to uh, clearly identify patients and, and staff in your organization. Think about your policy for shoes. Um, does it have to be closed toed? Does it have to be rubber sole? Does it have to be a certain color? Um, perhaps you want to have a policy where you've got shoes that are at the clinic so that you're not cross contaminating your uh, clinic from being out in the parking lot or at home or other things. Where are you going to keep all of these um, 
employees' uniforms and shoes and paraphernalia? Do you have the ability to have um, a locked storage cupboard that employees can keep their personal effects in the clinic that'll be secure and that will be available for them when they get in? Is there um, a closet where people can hang up their, their, their lab coats? So these are the types of things that you want to consider in your policy and procedure. What about hair? Um, this gets to be a little mm, challenging about making sure that you've got some good policies in place that allow people to express their own individuality, but also make sure that they are safe and that they are um, hygienic in this type of a work environment that we have. So perhaps having some kind of motherhood statements about hair, that it's clean and neatly groomed. Um, long hair should be tied back during patient treatment or when operating machinery. Um, if you're not going to have a uniform requirement, how else are you going to describe what's acceptable about clothing? So if you're going to allow staff to wear street clothes, can it be sleeveless? Um, is, are you going to have a question about neck length or hem length? Um, these are the types of things that you want to have that conversation about. So your privacy policy about a dress code should really have uh, be based on a conversation so that you have some clear understanding about what are expectations in your organization. You might also want to consider um, having in your policy um, statements about fragrances um, should be avoided or um, how are you going to address that. What about jewelry? Um, you don't want to harm yourself. You don't want to harm patients. Um, so how are you going to address jewelry? What is considered hygienic? Um, what as an organization or as a business, um, do you want to take a responsibility for or liability for if somebody um, lost a valuable piece of jewelry? Um, that can be um, mitigated by having a policy to say in, respect of not losing information, uh, patient or, or jewelry in your organization. Please don't come to work wearing any expensive jewelry. Um, body piercings and tattoos. Um, that's an interesting topic. And if you've got any experience about how you've managed um, the conversation about body piercing and tattoos, I'd love to hear about it. Um, you might want to use some generic um, wording like the tattoos and body piercings um, must be discreet and provide no risk to the wearer or the patient. Um, so some opportunities for you to um, use some terminology that is inclusive, that's not um, um, discriminatory. Uh, but really gets to the purpose about why we're talking about this. It's about branding, it's about image, it's about creating trust, and it's making sure that everybody is safe. Um, another item that might be important for your organization is not having artificial nails. And in some cases, not even having fingernail varnish or, um, is, uh, is, uh, is of importance for the workspace that you are working in. So those are some things that I wanted to share with you about having a dress code policy. And we've put this together for you in a practice management success tip. We've also given you some tips about how to have a conversation with your staff so that you can get some help from them about how you want to customize the wording for this.